Where's the sample import? I'm freaking out here. Well, if you just tap on the sample there, it's actually up here. If you haven't used the sampler in GarageBand for a while, there's been some changes and it's actually very cool. If you get to the sampler, you go to a new track, a new project here in GarageBand, go to keyboard and tap on the sampler. And here is the sampler with our classic dog bark. Yeah. Now you can use the built-in samples here, but that's a very boring way to use the sampler. You can tap up the top here and you can go to whatever samples you're using in this song, or you can go to your sample library here to use anything that's been saved in here from before. So here in this song, I've actually got this sample, which is the Ravenscroft 275. Now, why is it a sample and how did I create it? Well, that's what I'm going to show you here because there's something cool you can do in the sampler that you may not know about. So let's, uh, let's hit this sample. It's very high there. So it's a piano sample. Yeah, big, big deal, Pete. Great. Thanks for that. Now, if you know, if you didn't know about the sample, let's go back to basics. If you want to record in your own sound, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can literally hit the record button and then use your microphone. I just happen to have an audio interface plugged in here. So hello, I've got my mic plugged in here. So I'm going to uh, just do some sort of sound here. Let's do this. So I've just done a bit of a sine wave there. And you notice it's pretty clever. It didn't start recording until it heard noise. So that now. I can actually play it here using the keyboard. Pretty simple. Now if I want to save this sample, I can come in here. I can save it to my library. I can give it a name and I'll call it, uh, I'll call it Pete. Ooh, right? Yeah, Pete. Ooh. Uh, and that's now saved that here into my library, and I can come back and use the Pete Ooh in any project at any time. Nice. And uh, the cool thing about the keyboard here is you've got all the same things you can do. You can use chord mode here. You can use your arpeggiator if you want to do some funky, cool things like this one here. <laughs> So you can use it exactly the same way that you'd use any of your other keyboard instruments, which is pretty darn cool. So if you haven't played around with the sampler for a while, do that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is that you can import a sample. Now, it used to be a button out here and people lately have been saying, where's the sample import? I'm freaking out here. Well, if you just tap on the sample there, it's actually up here. So you've basically got to go in as if you're about to load a sample and then hit the import button. And that'll bring up all of your Apple loops. So you can bring in an Apple loop as a sample, but the cooler thing is you can go to files here and this will go to your GarageBand file transfer folder where you can, uh, anything that you've brought in, like uh, something that we've got here. <laughs> We can bring that in. So we can uh, tap the little download button. That brings it into here. It'll just bring it in for this song. If we want to save this to our library for future use, we hit this button. We give it a name. We'll just call it the default name. And that's going to save it here into our library, meaning that if we open up a new project, it'll be there and ready to use. So let's tap on that one and bring it on out here. Now, Pete, that's too long. We can't use that. Well, guess what? You can actually just bring the handles here and just find one particular part of this and turn any loop into a one-shot sample. And then you've got the flexibility to have whatever you like. So you can choose any part of any audio file and make that by just bringing these handles and then dropping them where you want them. Now, you've probably already heard this. The problem with the sampler and with the GarageBand sampler is that lower notes are slower and higher notes are faster because they're literally just changing the frequency, the sample rate. And that means that the pitch and the speed is changed. Now, there's other samplers in other applications that don't have that limitation. Here in GarageBand iOS, we have that limitation. So if you want more advanced stuff, check out some of the other samplers in GarageBand or uh, move into Mac and use something like Logic, which has a next level kind of sampler. Okay, here is the thing that you may not know about that I wanted to show you that's cool. And that is this little button here. So this is your input button. And you know we're on channel one here. So what we can do is we can choose channel one or two on our audio interface. Or if you don't have an audio interface plugged in, it'll just be the built-in microphone. You can monitor. Turn on the monitor so that you can hear what you're recording when you're doing it or have that off. But look at what we got here. Inter-app 
audio. You can actually use instruments and effects that use interrupt audio and sample them directly into the sampler. Now, yes, you could just use this and record the instrument in by itself, but the reason you might want to do this is you just want a quick sample from a different app. So let's go to instrument here. Why don't we try the sensual sax? So we can tap on the sensual sax and look what it does here. It adds that as an instrument here within our sampler. How cool is that? So now when we hit the record button, it's waiting for input from this instead of from our actual microphone. So now if we tap on the instrument, it's gonna open up our sensual sax. We can turn it up here and we can play in a little sax part. And then if we swap back, if this is gonna work, if it's gonna play nicely with us, there it is, it's recorded that. We now hit the stop button because it's gonna keep recording. And again, it's waited for that sound to come in. And now, let's just turn the velocity up because it recorded a little bit quiet. Why is this cool? Well, if you've got an external instrument that's, say, using up a lot of processing power, or you're creating a track and you want to share it with someone else and they don't have that plugin, guess what? You can record it straight in here, sample that instrument, and then you've actually got it ready to use. You can come in here and use it on your, your chords mode. And you can do all sorts of cool things. We can get an arpeggiated sensual sax, which uh, I've never tried before, but let's just do uh, Lou. This is like a, an eighth note arpeggio, maybe. So you can have yourself a lot of fun. It just gives you the possibility to use any sound here. So again, the sampler is super cool. Record your own sound. Come in here and import your sound by tapping there and hitting the import button or use the input here and choose an inter-app audio of any of your other apps. Record in your sounds and you have an absolute wealth of stuff.